Welcome back to my pen making series. This is part three and the last part. This is where I show you how I mill the pen blanks on the lathe and what can happen, good and bad, and my finishing techniques. So right now, this is on a pen mandrel. I showed you that part in um, part two and didn't really talk about it much, but one part, the part on the left, sticks into the headstock and the other part goes into the back. And in this case, I use something called a mandrel saver tailstock center. The actual mandrel goes right through the end of the tailstock. I tighten it down, tighten down the tailstock. There's two different places to tighten it down so it's nice and secure. Because if I catch something, which is likely to happen when you're using and milling irregular things, if I catch something, that's a carbide bit, by the way, See how it stopped? It caught something. So I realized I had to make this even more snug than what I had it and or turn up the speed so it doesn't easily catch and stop the whole process of spinning. There's no guarantee when you make an irregular blank that it's gonna have the colors in it you think it's gonna have. It, it really it depends on what it looks like when you mill down into the core. So if you're making these blanks, which I describe in one and two of this series, you can put these things closer to the center where your brass rod is going to, it's not a rod, it's a tube is going to go through, so you can kind of get an idea what you're going to end up with. In this case, pine cone was in the center, and it does turn out very nicely, and you'll see that in the end. So once you get your shape milled down to something that feels good in the hand, consider that when you're making a pen. Your user, people don't necessarily like really fat, bulbous pens. They like things that will fit nicely in their hand, more streamlined. Makes it a little more challenging to make because you have to not only meet the kit requirements of, uh, of uh, diameter, but you also have to think about the user's experience, which I make them smaller at the end that is going to fit the tip of the part of the pen kit into place. The top part doesn't matter as much unless you're going to use a clip. In this case, I do use a clip, so it's pretty narrow from one side to the other. So now I'm at the sanding place and the carbide bit cuts it very cleanly so you don't need an aggressive sandpaper. This is 220, but if you do use an aggressive sandpaper, you're better off going back to lathing with your lathe tools and cutting because it scratches the crap out of your material and then you have so much sanding to do, which I don't know, I hate sanding. So it's something I'd rather avoid. This is a 220 grit and it's pretty fine so and it's enough to get me through to the next stage where I use this micro mesh material that is back, backed by um, like a foam and that works really well to make it so smooth. I have four different grits of this stuff and it's not even a number like you see on most sandpapers like 220 400, 600, this is just called like ultra fine, ultra whatever, micro fine. It's not more specific than that. Now I'm moving on to this stuff called HUT. It's, it's a pen polish, but it's really, really hard. And so it's like a friction wax you put onto the pen itself. And again, silky, really like a glass finish and um, you put it on. I'm putting some pressure on this and you put it on and then you wipe it off. It doesn't really have to dry. It's, it's already, so it's so hard, but you just wipe it off and you keep changing positions with your paper towel there. And I let the lathe do the work, which is nice. No more sanding. So I like this and it just makes a beautiful finish. And there's the pen with a 24 karat finish on the kit. I 
I'll show you how to put these kits together at the end part of the video. That's coming up. But I'm going to show you a few more milling techniques before we get to that place. Here I have switched to a square carbide cutter before I use the round one and it, it just this hits more surface and it depends on the material you're using. This is a little bit more mm, aggressive. I don't know what to really say. This, this blank, by the way, is made up of uh, mahogany and coco bolo and maple and I think the end is, well, I'm not sure really what they are. I do them quite earlier on in the game, so I don't really remember all the wood parts, but I have such a variety of exotic woods, it, it could be anything, honestly. My point is, I can use a square carbide bit because I know that the material I am lathing here is more durable. It's able to withstand the whacking of this carbide bit and cutting of this carbide bit. So now that I've moved to the ends, which is critical, you get at the same dimension as that bushing. I described that in part two. But it's critical you get it. The, otherwise, it won't fit in the kit right. And forget it. That, that's a big boo-boo. So I switched to that round carbide bit because it hits a smaller area when you're milling. And I can do a finer detail with this. So this does really nice final work and um, it's not as aggressive, so it's a perfect tool to use for this finishing part. Now I'm on to the sanding, again, sanding, but it's quick with this, so I'll just sand this down, and I also put the wax on, I showed you that earlier, and now, right now I'm just getting rid of that, um, the, the wax and doing the fine friction polish. I'm including this next example of this pen blank. It is a pine cone, a quarter of a pine cone, embedded in a clear resin. And it's just fragile. But you never know until you try to mill it. The, the next one you're going to see is also pine cone embedded in resin, and that one milled up beautifully. So when you do this, and you can see it's chipping out pretty badly, you know, th that can be milled out, but you just keep trying until you see what you can get. This blank with the pine cone in it, on the other hand, milled up beautifully, as you can see in the top right corner. So I was very happy with this. And that's the, that's the thing about making unusual pen blanks. You want to do it because you've got this gorgeous, one-of-a-kind, extremely unusual piece. And, you know, you're, you're willing to take the risk and see the blowouts that occur and other things for the sake of the beauty of the end product. example in part three of this pen series is the blank that I made using Coco Bolo. It's an oily wood and it's just absolutely beautiful when it's made up. And last 
lastly, as I promised, the assembly process. In the back is a pen kit assembling tool. It helps you squeeze them in evenly so you, you don't get anything askew while you're putting these individual very small parts together. This is the, um, I didn't show you this pen blank that I made, but nevertheless, the process is the same. You just follow what it says on the kit. You know, they give you absolutely clear directions. So you follow the assembly. I lay everything out in that order, same as they're saying there. And that's the tip, that's the blank. And I decide which side I want to go into the tip versus into the head, head area where the um, twist is and where the clip is. So I'm making that decision first, I'm reading it, and then I'll put it together. And it tells me to put this coupler together first. So I open up the blank and you see the plastic pieces at the end, they help you figure out your depth and how much you need to bite this. And as you add pieces, it extends the length. So you have to take out, as I am there, one of those plastic pieces. So yeah, I took out another one to make sure this fit okay. Now each pen is different. And you'll see that if I do more of these, you'll these more of these videos, you'll see that each pen is different. They're different lengths, they're different amounts of blanks. Some have two, some have one like these. But you have to adjust as you build these things in your um, process of assembly. The next part goes in is the twist. It actually screws into that coupler you put on first. Screws down and I'm testing it out. Here's where it's essential that your pen blank is the right length. Otherwise, the ballpoint tip in this case would extend too far or not far enough, which would really mess up your whole pen. After the testing, I add the cap and that's it. Your pen is finished. And one more quick example of how you put together a pen. Each one of these pen kits has an individual name. This one is called an executive pen kit. And finally, some displayed pens. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe. I hope you hit the like button. Share it with your friends. Hit the bell button for notifications so the next time I make a video, whether it's a pen or a cutting board or a box, I make a lot of different things, you'll see it when you hit the notification button. Stay tuned. See you on the next one.